from the time we take our removal of four percent him, the enemy will step in. Yeah. So let us just focus on the one who preserved life for us and who gave us life. Hallelujah. Because the enemy has a way that will come into our lives. And once we take our focus, so let us focus on the Lord the, on the Lord this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, we will let you open in a word of prayer. Eternal Father, Lord Jesus, O God, it's a privilege and it's an honor once again to be in your presence, Lord. Father, as we come before you, O God, another time this Sunday morning, Lord, it is because of your grace and your goodness, Lord. It is because of your mercy, O God, that we are standing here this Sunday morning, Lord. And, and O God, your mercies are renewed every morning. And your mercies are enduring forever. Father, as we come, O oh God, this today, Lord, let us just focus on you, Lord. Let us just concentrate on you, Lord. Because, Lord, you gave us life, Lord. And life is more abundantly this morning, Lord. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, Jesus, for life this morning, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for what you have done for this week, Lord, by Lord. Father, we know that things are not happening as it's supposed to be, Lord. But, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for being a part of us, Lord Jesus, oh God. Lord, we worship you this morning, Lord. We come out to worship you, Lord. And, Lord, we will worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, things are not working out, Lord Jesus, oh God. But come what me, Lord, we will still, we will still worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord Jesus. So, Father, oh God, we thank you, Lord, for breath, for the bread of life that you have given us, O oh God. Lord, many have not taken out this week, O oh God. But Lord, we have bread, Lord. We have our hands. We have, we have our feet, O oh God. So Lord Jesus, we will praise you, Lord. In good times and in bad times, we will still praise your name. Because Lord, your name is above every other name. Lord Jesus, we have searched the whole world, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we could found none like you, Lord Jesus. Oh God, we thank you, Jesus. We worship you at this time, oh God. Lord, I pray for release of your anointing over your people. I pray for release of your blessings upon your people. And Father, I pray for release, oh God. Oh God, of God life, God life, of God life and prosperity over your life, Lord Jesus, oh God. Because Lord, we are going to live or not die. We are going to live or not die because Lord, we have to claim it in the name of Jesus. And Lord, you say what you ask for in your name, Jesus. Lord, it will be given. And I pray, God, for the service this morning, oh God, that we take charge, we take control, oh God. But I pray, Lord, your Holy Spirit will reign from Lord. Let the Holy Spirit reign from, from above, oh God. And Lord, let the Holy Spirit in control of the service from the beginning until the end, Lord. And Lord Jesus, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. But I pray, God, that we take away right now, Lord. You take away right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Holy Spirit. We welcome your presence right now, oh God. But I pray, oh God, for those that have been affection right now. Father, you touch them, you heal them, you deliver them, Lord. Because God there has no one to talk to but you, Lord. Father, hear the cries out to you, God. Father, we thank you, Jesus. We worship you. Father, you are with me for this morning. You are a miracle worker, Lord. Father, you is a light in the darkness, oh God. Father, let our light, oh God, let our light be shining in the darkness, oh God. Because, Lord Jesus, oh God, you gave us that light, oh God. So, Father, I pray, oh God, that you will remove every dark area and darkness of our lives, oh God. And, Father, help us, oh God, that we will see that light, oh God. Because, Lord, you are the work on which we stand. You are the light of our lives, oh God. Father, touch each and every one that is present here today, Lord. But I pray, oh God, for those who we have seen for a long time, oh God. Lord, touch them where so ever they are at this time, oh God, and those within that mission, Lord, those within, oh God, that mission, Lord, Father, hear the cries of you, Lord, deliver them, deliver them right now, Lord Jesus, oh God, Father, I pray, oh God, that you will have the final say in our lives, and you will have the final say in this week, in this week, in this week, and here today, Lord, so Father,
think of you, the praises start. I love you so much, Jesus. I love you so much. It's the Lord, I love you. Lord, I on your wings I love you so, so much Jesus I love you so much and I my soul longs for you and longs to feel your presence in our midst Lord Jesus hallelujah we know that you are here right now in our midst moving and working in our lives in the service right now Lord Jesus we praise and we thank you Lord Jesus because you are our way maker this morning Lord Jesus you are our way maker this morning Lord Jesus hallelujah, hallelujah. you are our promise keeper Lord our light in the darkness Lord and we take comfort in you this morning Jesus we take comfort knowing that you are hallelujah. here with us carrying hallelujah, us Lord Jesus. Jesus you are strong hallelujah. because we are weak right hallelujah. now in our weakness hallelujah. you are strong this morning and we reach out and hallelujah. we call on you this morning Lord Jesus hallelujah. to just be in our midst this morning we declare you our way maker right Jesus. now Lord Father hallelujah a way maker over our finances this morning Lord Jesus a way maker over our healing our health this morning Lord Jesus a way maker over our store baskets this morning Jesus a way maker over our jobs this morning Jesus a way maker in every argument this morning Lord we give it all to you Lord Jesus hallelujah Lord we worship and we praise you Jesus you are our promise keeper, Lord. Our promise keeper, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh. Yes, Lord. We will worship you. We will worship you. Hallelujah. You are here. Moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you. Yeah. 
Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. And you are here touching every heart. You are here touching every heart. I'll worship you. I'll worship you. I'll worship you. I'll worship you. You are here. You are here. Healing every heart. Healing every heart. I'll worship you. I'll worship you. You are here, you are here, turning lives around, turning lives around. Oh Lord, I worship you, I worship you. Oh Lord, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, you are here, mending every heart. Mending every heart. I will worship you, Lord. I worship you, I will worship you, I worship.
maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. That is who you are. 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 Who am I? That is who you are. You're my deliverer, Jesus. You're my conquering lion, oh Lord Jesus. Oh, from the tribe of Judah, the royal lion, oh Lord Jesus. The lamb of sacrifice, oh Lord. Hallelujah. The great I am. The Alpha, the Omega. The beginning and the end, oh Lord. My intercessor, my prayer keeper, my secret keeper. My Lord, my healer, oh Lord. Oh, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Hallelujah. That by your word every chain will be broken. By your word every heart will be healed, oh Lord. you. 
If you've been longing for somebody just to say, I care about you. I'm telling you about a God who loved you before you even formed. A God who named you before you were in your mother's womb. A God that despite all that you've been through, he's still loving on you. He's still loving on you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Just embrace them, oh Lord Jesus. And let your love just reign, oh Lord.
Hallelujah. Spirit break up. Spirit break up. Keep singing. Hallelujah. Break our walls down. Spirit break out. Let the heavens come down. Heaven come down. Holy Spirit. Spirit break out. Break our walls now. That's the name of the Lord. Somebody just worship God. You're online. You just worship God. Just send a happy hand, a love, something that you are enjoying the presence of God. And you're so thankful that God has kept you another day, another week. You God is so good. Amen. You want to know how good God is? I just want you to look at the person next to you and his precious son. Others, look at the person next to you and then you'll realize how good God is because he kept you, he protected you, he saved you, he directed you, he washed you, he cleansed you. He turned you around. He placed your feet on solid ground. I'm standing here only because of the grace of God. I'm standing here because of the love of God. That's the name of our Lord. So, welcome each and every one to the house of prayer. Dabadi Chabanakul. Let's clap our hands for the worshippers this morning. I say let's clap our hands for the worshippers. And uh, truly bless our hearts. Amen. We, we, uh, I'm there and I don't know what kind of feeling that came over me. I don't know if it's just exhaustion or whatever. I had to wet down my head, wet down my neck. But nonetheless, I'm in the presence of God. And I'm going to preach the word of God. Amen. Somebody say, preach, Pastor. Hallelujah. I need some supporters this morning. And it's not an easy topic. Some of you, I hope you still love me when I'm finished. But we are here at the word of God. Again, I welcome those of you in via Facebook and uh, we'll check our page on the internet, on YouTube. Uh, yes, put you to your seats, but you remain standing. It's Deuteronomy chapter 22. It's a very long passage, stithy verses. So can you please stand to show the reverence to the word of God? Deuteronomy chapter 22. Sunday school, I believe you can be excused. Deuteronomy chapter 22, it's a long passage. And you just go to verse 10. Thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass together. Thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass together. Oh, say, okay, you can take your seats. That's enough. Take your seats. When you go back, um, you can read from the beginning of that chapter. And you'll find it very interesting. Um, connection and connectivity is so important. And... Here is God, Deuteronomy. Those of you who went through a Bible course, you remember that Deutero means extra. Deutero means extra. 
And while I was teaching on that, I talked about the deuterocanonical um, extra writings of, uh, that they would have come across in the Bible. Like we have the revelations of Peter, and we have the gospel of um, Thomas, but it's not included in the final 66. So it, it's called deutero or extra. So Deuteronomy is the extra laws, or ceremonial laws especially, that God gave Moses as to govern the people, his people. And when you read it, you'll find that God is telling them not to wear certain, certain clothing or put or patch certain clothing upon other clothing and how to dress and how to wear and a man should not wear the garments of a woman and a woman should not wear the garments of a man. Amen? And uh, when they should plant, should not mix the seeds and so on. So you can go home and read it. And verse 10 says, Thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass together. Ah, boy. I'm going to burst some bubbles here, and I know you're spiritually minded. But the topic this morning is move your donkey. As the Bible says here, thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass. So move your ass, I mean donkey, sorry. Hallelujah. Connectivity is very important to anything that we do. As you look the gospel in Deuteronomy, God is really teaching them how to connect, how to be together as a people. And to be together as a people, you have to have some vision, some same thinking, some same morals, some same values, and so on, that you can work by, that you can live by. And in the story of creation, when God creates, there was connectivity. Amen? God creates, and everything is interconnected. There's, um, we are taught, if the bees should... We destroy all the bees of the earth, the bees that make the honey. And if the bees should disappear, we will all starve. Because everything is connected. Amen, somebody. When we look and I tell people you need to connect to the right people. Because if you connect to the wrong people, it could be a downfall. If you connect to the wrong people, it can mess you up. Amen. If you connect to the wrong spouse or friends or fam uh, families and, and others, it can really mess you up. But when you connect to the right people, right friends, and have good relationship, if you are connecting to the right people, it should push you into progress. It should push you into success. It should push you always into doing better than you have done before. You connect to the right, uh, right people, it, you, they would let you know that your best is not enough. And you need to do more. Hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. amen. And connectivity is so important. Today we live in a world, imagine that you have no internet. Imagine you cannot go on your smart devices cannot keep updated with the news and the people who like and dislike and who in this bacchanal and that bacchanal, bacchanal and who say and mention where your name come from and where my name come from, my name come from India and your name come from where sleep master and all these things. Uh, if there's no connect, uh, and I had uh, two weeks and more of that where we have no internet, so it was... Not stressful. Believe me, it was not stressful. I just needed to keep in the know so I would pass by somebody's Wi-Fi and get it. But other than that, the news are depressing. The news are depressing. This who are murdered, who have been... Do you know that Friday it was 100 days that uh, 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 Russia invaded Ukraine? Do you know today that Ukraine is playing Wales? 
for a place in the World Cup? Do you know today is a final um, day of Jubilee celebration for the, our Queen, or, or the Queen of England? Amen? Connectivity, the news and so on. Imagine a world, I see the post on Facebook that they give you a secluded island and they tell you you'll get a millions and whatever if you can live there for how much? Um, no internet connection, nothing, nobody. Just live there. The reality is some of us want to go to that island and just disconnect from everything and everybody. Hallelujah. When I talk about connectivity, I remember our aspiring deacon, a young brother, uh, Brother Fabian, talk about connection and, in, and everything is connected. Amen. You can remember that message. Con connected. And connectivity is the very principle to God and of God. We look at creation. See, everything is connected. When God, or when we connect, we create. Think about that. When we connect, we create. Or just imagine today, life without a connection. And we need to check a, a who or what we connected to. Because we can be connected to the wrong source. And if God is not our source, then we need to check ourselves. We might be connected to good people. And some nice people, but it may not be the right people. Hallelujah. Some people can stay in your heart, but not in your life. Hallelujah. As I said in Deuteronomy, God is teaching them about balance and connectivity and how to go about life. And we need to understand today that our lives are so busy. And I'm not going to ask anybody how much time we spend in prayer, how much time we spend with God, how much time we spend in the Word. Because I speak to people all the time, and they tell me, Pastor, I'm so caught up with this, and I'm so caught up with that. I have no time to pray. I have no time for the Word of God. And then in return, ask me, how on earth do you find time to read the Word, to study, to search, and so on? It is that simple. That we make time. Because we make time for everything else. Hallelujah. If you are planning a trip to go to America or some United Kingdom. And you have to go to the airport three and four hours early. We make sure and put everything in place to be there before time. Because we know if we are not before time or on time, we can be left behind. And this, if we take that same principle... Towards serving and worshiping God. Hallelujah. You, just imagine you walk into the house of God. What could happen? There might be no preaching. There might be no singing. It might just be the opening prayer. And the Holy Spirit moves in such a magnificent and powerful way. Hallelujah, somebody. But when God speaks here in Deuteronomy chapter 22. He says to... Israel, to the people of God, thou shalt not plow. Hallelujah. Thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass together. Just give me a few moments to... In the Bible, in the Old Testament, when God wanted to tell Israel about their whoring or wicked ways or when they have gone after the God... He will talk to the prophet, and the prophet will tell them, Your uh, people are stiff necked, jackass people. It's in the Bible. God will tell the prophet to tell the people that. And in the New Testament, when you read uh, um, from Paul, and when he describes the people of God, he will tell them they have strength as an ox. So when you 
look at the metaphors or metaphorically, you will understand that God is, looks at it spiritually, the ox or the spirit of the mother ox, and you have a spirit of an ass. Amen. Paul describes the church and tells the Christian that they are like an ox or bull, or ready and vigorous and aggressive. And when God needed to tell the people that have gone astray, he described them as donkeys. You see, today, people don't want to be described as animal because we are so up to date. But when the Bible says we are all like sheep, nobody wants to be called a sheep because they think that a sheep, that sheep are dumb. It's not really so much on the dumb side, but when the Bible describes us as sheep, it means that we submit to our shepherd. Amen. We submit to God. Hallelujah. And can I just tell the church this morning that if you have a spirit of an ox, that means you are governed by God. That means you are led by God. That means from the morning that you wake up to the going down of the sun, you recognize that God is in charge. And you cannot do anything without God. Somebody say amen. But if you have a spirit of a, 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 a donkey, that means you are governed by yourself. Hallelujah. And you have less care or no thought for God Almighty. And the worst thing an ox can do is connect with an ass. Uh, sorry, a donkey. Hallelujah. The worst thing an ox, a, a child of God, a, a, a person who have the spirit of God living in them, a, a person who has authority and power and all that we read in the Bible that we are blessed and highly favored and I'm blessed in my going out and blessed in my coming in. The worst thing an ox can do is connect with a donkey. Hallelujah. Are you still with me this morning? The Bible says that in the verse that Thou shall not plow. Thou shall not plow. And that word plow means to work, means to, to toil, means to be successful, means to create, means to be innovative. And how on earth can we as oxes, uh, oxens, and whatever have you, how can we have that spirit of an ox and be mingling with a donkey, a spirit of a donkey? Hallelujah. While we build friendship and relationship, are we building friendship and relationship on common values or on common interests? Let me explain this. You might like what I like. I like cricket and you might like cricket. You might like the food that we eat. We have common interests. You might pick up your girl and say, let's go and shop. Because, I mean, shopping is your thing. I love fishing. But my son does remind me, fishing don't love me. But I love fishing. I love throwing out that hook there and waiting for hours, probably sleep away and just waiting. But while they don't understand or they don't know Fishing is my point of contact or connection with God. Because the amount of ideas when you have all the time in the world and the fish are not biting and, and my hook look like it, the, fishes, the fishes are allergic to it or the bait. I am thinking, I'm, I'm watching, I'm watching the movement of the sky, I'm watching the water, I'm watching things and I'm saying, God, you're real good. And I'm concentrating and I'm thinking and I'm memberships and I'm going through my mind and I say, Lord, remember. So when you think I'm doing nothing, my mind is working. Somebody say amen. Whatever your interest is, you know when you do your resume or CV, they sometimes they ask you, what are your hobbies? 
and some people put different things. We can be in a relationship or a, a, a friendship and we have common interests, but are our values the same? Because I've experienced that over and over that people will say, but you are pastor of this denomination uh, and you know that all God is the same God. And I would just raise my eyebrow and look at them without answering and they would understand that I do not correspond or, 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 or collaborate that statement. And they would, they would say, well, Pastor, I see you raise your eyebrow. Oh, what, not, not all God is the same God. I say we may have common interests. You might like the food. You might like where we do and what, what we play sports. Uh, but when it comes to my values, uh, I believe what the Bible says, that Jehovah God, here, O Israel, the Lord God is one God. You might have different interests and, uh, and you think, but when it comes to value and moral standing, uh, I believe the word of God. I believe the Bible. I believe that God inspired men to write uh, and to give them the spirit uh, that they can write under the spirit and the anointing. Uh, although it is written by man's hand, uh, it is authored by the spirit of God. Teach pastor. It is altered. God is the author. And I believe that whatever is said here, it is true. And I've seen it come to pass. Can I just, I, I'll go stray a little bit here. Can I just prove that in Romans, the apostles said to the Roman church that in the latter days, men will leave the natural use of women and cleave unto men like themselves. And women will leave the natural use of men and cleave unto women as themselves. And it is abomination unto God. Amen. I tell people, you can be a lesbian, you can be a homosexual, God loves you, but you need to come to the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know how they're doing things on Facebook now, but there are certain words, if they use it, they send a warning, and then they, 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 eventually they discontinue your, 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 your connection. But I need to tell people the truth. And if God, my God, the saying if God is so loving and so kind, he would understand. He would understand. He would not go against his word. He would not go against his word. Hallelujah. Be careful about our values. Because you see in America, what is his name? Kyle Rittenhouse went to the jury and they say for killing people, shooting people, not guilty. Now you see recently on, uh, uh, on 19, is 19 of them in Texas, Rob's elementary school. Hallelujah. And, 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 uh, and I like what Cardi B say. Yeah, I like what she say. They're not mentally ill. They're mentally evil. Hallelujah. Because when people come and tell me, I don't know how I go about it. I'll, I'll go continue along that road. I don't know how when people come and say, Pastor, you don't know, you know. I grew up a single parent. Pastor, you don't, you don't know, you know. I grew up in poverty. I didn't have this and I didn't have that. I say, let me burst your bubble. Let me tell you, you're not alone in that. And there are others who grew up with single parents. There are others who grew up in poverty. But they decided, I have a spirit of an ox. I'm not a spirit. I don't have a spirit of an ass. So I'm going to stand up. I'm going to be accounted for. I'm going to study. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to make something of myself. God helping me. Then lawyers come together and say, because of the environment and because of, of where they, they were grown up. Yes, and I understand all that. But I still stand on the word of God. Let me tell you something. In Israel, when a young man, they say a child, a child who was rec um, recognized as the age of 25 and under. Michael, you're still a child. 25 and under. And in Israel, when a child is given trouble, parents talk, yeah, no, you, I want to hear you. 
warn you, they carry you to the elders. And the elders say, hey, you obeying God. We have some values here. If you want to go down that road, yeah, you better stop. And if you continue to rebel, can I go on? No, Lex. They put you at the gate and they stone you to death. I know it's harsh. But let me tell you something. When that one rebellious child is dealt with, you know what happened? All the children in Israel, yes, mommy. Yes, daddy. Nobody gave in trouble. No, we don't expect that in this time. But when we drop our morals and our value and we fail to teach our children and everything today is, is, come, is about understanding and understanding and understanding and it, sin is creeping in to the textbook, sin is creeping into the school, sin is creeping into the church, sin is creeping in everywhere and we are just saying, okay, it's the time we live. I'm looking for the word when they say you need to recognize people's rights and uh, I can't remember it right now. But my song has, but it is true. I'm seeing things happening and hearing of things happening and then I'm saying, why have we reached this point? It's because we have taken God out of school, out of home, out of society, even out of the church. Amen. Take God out. Doom or failure. See, we teach us children values. They may not have a big crowd following them, but they have the right crowd. Amen. We stand up for values. We may not have the whole uh, 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 a thousand followers, but we might have two who would say, yes, boy. Yes, girl. Amen, somebody? Yeah. Let's look at the, the, the ox. They are similar, and the donkey is similar, similarity. They are both animals. They bo God said to the owner, he says, you know what? When you have your ox and your ass, don't let them plow together. So they, they, they belong to the same owner. They belong to the same farm. But they are created for different purposes. Hallelujah. When Jesus was on the earth, the disciples found somebody casting out spirits, demonic spirits. And the disciples went up and said, Stop! Not of us. And then they went back to Jesus with a peacock spirit and they said, Jesus, we find somebody casting out and casting out devils and so on. And we stop him. And Jesus uses a remarkable statement. He says, if people are not against you, they are for you. Let me explain that. You see what Jesus was really telling them? You're so, you're so caught up with, with, with who on your team and who not on your team. You're so caught up with all the interests and who in me have my best interest and this interest and so on, that you forget values. And I want you to know that here now, if people not, they're not against you, then they're for you. They have the same values because they're casting out the same devil. We need to understand that Dabri Tabernacle is not it. Church of our Lord Jesus Christ is not it alone. And we need to understand that heaven is a big place, full of glory and grace. But I ask people, what will you do when you reach heaven to spend eternity? What you going to do? Hallelujah. Same owner, same farm. They created, but their purposes are different. We have to be so careful to understand today that if God is the owner and the farm is the church, then there are some... As, I mean donkeys, even in the church. And if people with that kind of spirit is there, we are, who are the ox, you need to tell them, move your... Thank you. Move your ass. You see, when you look at it, the scriptures, one scripture, but you need to pay attention that 
when you look on the, the chain of animals and, uh, and you look at the horses and, uh, and the unicorns and all the lists, uh, donkeys are way down here. If you look at the movies, I mean, just go to Shrek. I mean, donkey, he made the movie, but he's very annoying. You look at the other one with um, <clears throat> Winnie the Pooh. The donkey there, he, oh, I, oh, I, oh. he's always worried and troubled and, and, and all these things. Because when God uses the jackass to describe uh, the people of God in the Old Testament, he knew what he was doing. Because people saw the donkeys as low. As nothing compared to the horse, or compared to the bull, compared to the oxen, compared to the cow. Let me tell you something. If we allow people to say and tell us who we are, we go continue believing that. Yeah. If we feel inferior and we allow people to dictate and tell us who we are, you know what will happen? We go have that kind of spirit of a donkey. Because why we might say, yes, I don't want you to feel that like the donkey is, is all that bad. Because when you look at uh, uh, on YouTube and you look, there are places where the bull or the ox can go, but donkey does go. But I'm not using it in, a, in such a negative term, but I'm looking at the spirit of a donkey. Inferior. Today... When you look at the donkey, it's small compared to the ox. When you look at the donkey, it takes small steps because it is small and the ox is big and aggressive. Mm -hmm. Very aggressive. You put a plow on the ox and he's ready to go. Come on. When you look at the donkey, the difference is that the ox bears his weight on its neck. But the donkey is a burden bearer. Bears it on his back. And when we, when we look at it spiritually, we realize that if you have a spirit of an ox, you are aggressive. You're ready to move. You're ready to get it. Yes, pastor, let's get it done. Let, let me move. Let me go down the road. Yes, souls have to be one. This has to happen and so on. But when you have a spirit of a donkey... Oh boy, you don't know how hard that is. Pastor, you know how difficult it has been. Pastor, I don't think that could be done. You get up, oh, the rain is falling, the sun is never out. Oh, I've been through this and that. Yes, there is a time to mourn, the Ecclesiastes tells us. Yes, there's a time to cry. Yes, there's a time for this and a time for that. But he also says there is a time for war and there's a time for praise. And I believe as a Christian, if I'm going through something and I just start raising my hand and praising God and lifting up his name and I'm serving the true and living God, then something has to happen. Somebody shout amen. This inferiority complex that we walk around with. And we all go through that. Hallelujah. We need to stop babysitting other people's insecurities. We need to do that. God has not called us to babysit other people's insecurities. Don't dim your light so somebody else who have a spirit of an ass can shine. Are you with me? Don't dim your light. Don't bring yourself to devil level. Because here it is, back to the scriptures right there. If the ox starts plowing and moving and he puts the yoke on the ox, the donkey is smaller, who is bearing the weight? The ox. 
He's pulling and then he has to slow himself down to the pace of the donkey. By the time he makes two steps, the donkey now making trying and moving over. And I want to tell people today, if you have a spirit of an ox and you're around people who are distressing you, who are tired, you know, when you go by them, you're drained. When you're depressed, when you're wrong them, then you are wrong and donkey. And you have to tell them, move your Donkey. Ox is put on, put a yoke on them. Donkey carry burdens. Stop being a wrong people who carry a wrong burdens. Burdens come and go. Jesus himself said, cast all your cares, all your burdens upon me. I'm going somewhere with this. And, and, and yes, we go through life and there are burdens that come. You know, this week, Deacon, stove blew up. I, and, and, and Sister Mary is saying, well, we had to get somebody to fix it because there are certain things I could fix. My gas needle went on E and never raised back up. It was jumping all the time, but this time, so I don't know if I had gas or not. So I studied, okay, there's no money for that. There's no money for the stove. We borrow our ring stove. And we be cooking, but when you have three, four pots, you know it's one at a time. So I hear him, get a stove, man. And this and that, buying him, get a mechanic. <laughs> but in all that, I say, God, you know what? I'm planning this message. Help me not to become an, a donkey. Help me not to become and have a spirit of an, a donkey. So I start thinking about it, I start praying about it. I say, you know what, Brother Steve, the worst could happen if they're coming back up from E, so the worst could happen, it never work again. I open it, and I pray in hand, and I say, God, give me the, the ability, give me the strength. And all of a sudden, I clean it out, I put it back, I see it sat back to jump. At least I know I have some gas now. Hallelujah. I go on with the stove, and, and boy, we take it outside. Big son, help me. But never stayed around to see what I'm doing. Pray to get blow up. Say, Daddy, kill yourself by yourself. When I check it out, boy, hose leaking to the back. I said, that was the problem, man, with my soap water and all these things. And a million screws, Sister Felicia. Long, Sister Sandra, long time console, let us raise the, the, the top off and that's it. A million screws. Some of the screws lock up. Pressure, can't get it out. Let's go in, go, go, go in somewhere with this. And, and boy, there's a... a while under pressure and while I'm going, I hear you should have called the stove man. <laughs> the ass spirit in me nearly jump up uh, and really say, but I say, no, you're an ox, you're an ox, and you had to preach that Sunday, you're an ox, you're an ox, keep, keep your ox head down here and get these things done. When we don't do it late in the night, I say, I sure I fix the problem, boy. And I turn it back on and I see the stove lighted. But I lenny, I light a piece of paper and I see everybody just clearing away. And I light the paper and I hear boom. Things still leaking. I say, well, now I know it is the valve that is leaking, that is knob. So I go back and I hear him call the stove man. What are you gonna pay the stove man with? What are you gonna tell him? Thanks after. What are you gonna tell him? He take the stove and go on and tell me that I'm a payment. So I go on back again. I say, Lord, all night I study. Next morning I say, Lord, I believe you give me some intelligence. So I take it apart and I open it up. And I, next thing you know, brother, any easy fix. Just take the grease off. There's some grease that went down in it. Take it off. Stove working. Food cooking. Thing working good. No, I want to tell you, you might still think I'm talking about stove and donkey, but there is a time in our lives, each and every one of us, that there is a spirit of a donkey that rises up. Thank you, Deacon, but I want amen. Thank you, sister. There is a spirit of an ass that comes up, I, I, and we really want to tell people how we feel. We really want to, oh God, the government, and, you know, every time I go in the grocery, I see prices raising. You want to come up. When I go by that extra food and I see they put something 99, I ask the girl, where my one cent chain? Do I put something to 99 cents and you give me back? Put it to 95. 
strategy. Say, all the wicked money in my head, but I uh, keep it cool. Uh, hey, <laughs> plenty, plenty. Hallelujah. You're going in your job, and uh, you know, there's, one, there's always one devil in your job. There's always one demon in your job. There's always one demon in your, in your neighborhood. There's always one demon living right next to you. But God has given us a spirit of an ox. Because the same co-worker you're going to plan to cuss out is the same worker going to meet you in an open air and say, hey, hey, I didn't know you used to sing in the worship team. Hey, hey, I didn't know you used to go to church and you just cuss them. Amen. Anyway, let me go back to my message and send you all home. Hallelujah. So, 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 don't babysit people in securities. Because we're going around wrong today. I, I, the COVID has caused something and I realize that we, you know, if you're wrong somebody and it'll check everything you say. If you're wrong somebody and you have to calculate in your mind before you say something, that is a stress by itself. All right, let me go to husband and wife. You ever in a quarrel, brother Steve, and anything you say can be held against you. Amen. Amen. I see, they say this man made the Guinness Book, a world book of record. Why is it Johnny what? The first man to win an argument against a woman. Amen. But you ever in a, in a situation or in your job, or in your home, wherever you are, and everything you say or talk, people watching you. It's time we start getting rid of the asses. It's time we tell them, move, donkey. Hallelujah. I, I heard the song, heaven come down. What is it? Help me with the rest. Break our walls down. I know we want heaven to come down and we want the Holy Spirit to move and we want walls to tumble and we want this and we want that and when we can't even come together because in the church they may have ox and in the church they may have asses. And we need to get rid of that spirit. I tell you the truth. Many a times that spirit of a donkey would come up. And the reality is as a Christian, I succumb to the donkey spirit. And I deal with the matter. Hate, dislike, I give vex. I know that will happen to you spiritual people, but it's happened to me. Especially if there's a young man in, in the house. Hmm. I just really want, God have mercy, but to keep it down. I boasting, I saying. You never hear my cuss. Mr. Maria, you never hear my cuss. And I, yeah, boy, you're holding it. No, I talk about myself. I talk about reality. Because there are times when you keep bearing and you're bearing. And that one neighbor will come and point your finger and tell you, hey, you. And then they will say, not today. Take this. Hallelujah. I never preach in reality to any people on Facebook there. Unlike the horse, my last point here, and the stallions and the bulls and the, the oxen and all that, they love sweet grass, just like sheep and so on. They choose to eat sweet grass. Good. They chew it up, they take it, regurgitate, and then they sit down and chew. But a donkey... He, given the opportunity, loved to stray, mind people business. And just like a goat, strays, and then he will eat some shrubs and some different plants, and some of it may be very, uh, become poisonous, but he don't care, he eaten. And when you look at it, the toxic plant that the ass eat, I mean the donkey eat, it gives them toxic breath. Are you with me still? And 
If he's around another donkey, they two talking, laughing, and nobody knows anything about bad bread. Because they somehow so accustomed that the bread doesn't bother them. But they have put an experiment that if a donkey should eat this toxic grass and herbs and shrubs and so on, and they put him around other animals, and you can see all the animals with their neck turned this way while they have the yoke and they're walking, and donkey is a aside, walking aside, but what the donkey is breathing out is toxic. And the animal gets stiff neck because the way he's supposed to carry the load properly and work and plow and toil, mm, he has to now bend and strain himself because the toxic, toxic breath that is coming out of Mr. Donkey can even cause death. Where I'm going with that? I'm glad that you asked. We have to be so careful as believers who we position, who we line, who we steer around because they may mean good, but their breath is bad. Have you ever been around people with bad breath? Let me change that. Have you ever been around a donkey with a toxic breath? The other day, I had a bout of COVID. Left me with a cold on my throat. Boy, I brushed my teeth. I, I knew I brushed my teeth. And I come on the bed and I lie down. But you know when you have a cold in your throat somehow, so something I'm saying and I'm talking, and as I turn, the wife say, hey, you ain't brush your teeth. I say, yeah, girl. Yes, she will. You should go and brush it again. I brush it you know, three times in, in that space, three times. I, I, I realized it's the cold, so I went and do the best thing. Turn to the left, pull the sheet, and sleep away. Because even as a preacher, I've developed one thing. A time in my younger life, there is a Wednesday night service, and they call for prayer and they say, Mike, come up, we're going to pray for you. And believe me, this is true, this is real, I didn't know makeup thing. And the guy, Michael, stop, don't call nobody name, eh? Michael, this is between the church here. And the guy, when he finished praying for me, while he is praying, I cannot focus on anything that he is saying. And this is me turning my head. And more like I turn my head, it's more like they feel I have some demon. And they're praying longer. Truth be told, I went to the back of the church and washed from my head. All I, I don't know if it was some rotten teeth or something. But boy, I ain't hear one word. All I could do is demon possession, man. Yeah. Thing to knock you out. Now spiritually... If you are wrong and ass with bad breath, my God, who is keeping you back? Who is not pushing you to your destiny? Who is not making you become successful? Who is just there tagging along and pulling you down? Then you need to tell that person, move your donkey. Move your... Because, as I close... In the Proverbs, it says, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. But it's not really the tongue. It really means the breath. So your breath is important to God. Let's go back to creation. When God created and he breathed his breath in you, and then he sit back and he said everything that I created was good. Now, if you have the breath of God and you are good, and God said that you're good. Why are you wrong? Some donkeys that are ill-talking and bad-talking and saying this and saying that and you're believing it. 
One time, I tell the kids, my daughter have stories like that. And she bring in some story. And I said, stop. Did you see and hear with your own ear and with your own eye? No, I hear this girl say so. I say, then it is not true. I say, once you see with your eye and you hear with your then you can come and say, because when you go before the court of law, the, you don't want to hear, I hear and I think and I believe it might be so. I want to know, did you see or what did you not see? And this is what I'm teaching them. Don't pay attention to people with bad breath, spirit. Now today, my God, you know, in school, I can only talk about school. When you, when you fall out, sister, you say with somebody, they go walk up and they go pull the friend from you and say, don't talk to she. Or don't talk to you. We ain't no friend again. And they would walk and wince and whine and walk up and watch you and just, and walk away. I mean, in school it happens up to now. But today, it, it has so much as that, you know, Deacon Davis. We have bad bread tums. People who are tum, they, they, they faster than lightning. And they could post and they could put and they could comment and they could set you up. Be careful even what you put on social media. Hallelujah. God said that the bread that he breathed in you, it is good. That means you don't have to add, you don't have to take out. And if your bread is good, then why are we a wrong people that are not good? Why are we a wrong people with some donkey attitude? Why are we believing a lie? Why are we believing gossip? Why are we believing old talk? Why are we believing? Because I tell you, you may not like me after this, but you know, when I was younger, I, I, and I always sell the church yard, and I, I had problems and giving me ties, boy, because I walk in. My father said to me, he said, you is a big shot. He said, because you have big TV, you have fridge, you have this, you have that. He didn't know I was living by courts. So a day, I tell him, pa, I leave any job. And he said, you mad? Why are you leaving that job? That is a government job. I said, no, it's not a government job. He said, why are you making good money? I said, $350 a week. He said, man, leave that job. You see, his perception is seeing things. They don't know what's going on. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. And then I decided, you know what? Sure, because I say in God, you're going to understand. 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 Because I have a young little child every week we in the hospital. I had to borrow money. To, to, he always um, bronchitis and, and they had to put him on the realizer. And when I carry him in the hospital, the nurse son the animals, well, look, the little hardened child come. He don't want, because we had to hold him down and tie him just to put something on his nose. Then he just tell Malachi he hardened. Every week. Cough medicine, honey and paragoric was eleven dollars. No honey and paragoric is about seventy or eighty. I don't know. Boy, oh, I get in that. Hallelujah. I decided. I trust in the word of God. I believe in the word of God. Malachi is the book of Malachi, the New Testament, all over the Bible. Say, bring it the, the ties and the offering into the bands, into the house of God. I see that I will not open a window of heaven. When that preacher preached that message, I say, Lord, hear what I'm doing, what you say. And next thing you know, I give in faithful and God start to open doors. God start to open doors. God start to open doors. Because the bad breath, the donkey's breath that was in me, I was saying, you know, I, why, 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 Pastor, don't need that. I tell him what I went through. Pastor, don't need, he have this and he have that. And I was saying that, and I didn't understand that this was a faith thing. This was a God thing. This was the word of God. And I decided that day, hear what? I will do it. And I dare you to step out in faith. You know what? And I want to leave it there so. Life and death is in the power of the breath. Hallelujah. In creation, God breathed and he said it's good. Hallelujah. 
But I love this Psalms. He says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. I wish if I had a praiser here this morning. He says that let everything that have some good breath praise the Lord. Lord, let's remember this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 12. The Apostle Paul tells the people, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. And um, a lot of us sell, uh, refer to that as marriage only. He says, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. And we say, when it comes to marriage, you should not marry somebody who is not a Christian. And I understand all that. But when you read the text carefully, you would understand that there are unbelievers in the house of God. Amen. There are people who say, nah, that can't happen. There are people who say, no, this can't happen. And God is saying, I am in control. We sang the song. He is gyro. He's more than enough. God is a provider. God is a way maker. We sing it all the time. Every Sunday, let's start believing that He is a rewarder to those that diligently seek Him. We are called by His name. I have to... The Deacon Vedrick, I had to make a, a, another 360, but a 180. Because I kept going in circles until I put my foot down and I said, enough is enough, boy. Enough is enough. And I won't tell you what was the breaking point, uh, but it was a message when I was not here. I was not there that Sunday. And I heard it and I said, God, enough is enough. I need to come out of this depression. I need to come out of this way and insecurity. I need to come out. I need to come out. I'm devil. I need you to take back all that you are brought on and take it back and don't bring it back. I need somebody to testify. Devil, enough is enough. I could talk about myself. You see, people think that we pastors and men of God and women of God have it all. A man say, You are a pastor, buy everything made. I say, God made everything. He said, No, but all oh, that big ride and big shot and this and that. I said, Let me tell you something. I'm a child of God, I'm a servant of God. Read your Bible. <clears throat> I say, let me ask you, how Paul died? I you know. I said, they chop up his head. I say, how Peter died? I say, you know. I said, they crucify him upside down. I say, how this one died and how that one? I say, how Isaiah died? They put him and saw him in half. How did they die? But today, as I end, I'm going to start end with what I was saying at the beginning. Connect to the right people. Connect or reconnect to your God. This message today should teach us how to connect and how to disconnect. Stop listening lies. Stop listening foolishness. I was up, up for that period of time over two weeks and you know, I said, thank you Lord because the children came home but they're not on the tablet, they're not on the sun, they're not, and, and they just, Malachi playing with a dog. Michaela drawing some kind of um, animation and I say hey. and I telling them I say long time when we before all this thing we just sit down and listen our parents talk about stories enough there move move your donkey keep your donkey Brett keep your donkey attitude keep Everything that is negative from my connection to God, keep it away. We need to go forward. We need to pray. The world is falling down. The Trinidad and Tobago is going to hell. Economy is, is out of control. And we as believers, we have to continue to trust and believe that God is a way maker. Let's all stand. What's that song? Play, please. There's room. And the cross. Father God, as we stand here today, we have a spirit of an ox. 
I'll go get her, achieve her, a, a spirit of success, a spirit of uh, 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 overcoming. Let us not satisfy to be in a spirit of a donkey, to bear burdens. To rock around I said this is all I, I can do all I, I can say I believe in all that they tell me let us stand up today and say God if you can use anybody you can use me this morning use my hand use my feet touch my head Lord yes use Oh God, the sister touch on cancer. There's so much affected by cancer. And somebody's going to come on this stream, Lord. And they're going to listen. And they're affected by cancer. Or the effects of cancer. Or they're diagnosed with some trace of cancer. Father, we bind it. We bind it right now in Jesus' name. We pray, Father, that you are a healer. That you are a healer. There's room. Hallelujah. But I pray that you make a way. We might seem small here, David. We might seem a little bit, but Father, we are powerful because you have your spirit dwelling in us. You have your spirit moving in us. Lord God, that you make a way that we stop believing a lie, that we stop holding people in mind, that we stop hating, and we stop believing what the devil has thrown us and thrown at us, Lord. And we leave it alone and say, I have a spirit of an ox. So those of you who've been online until by God's grace next week, God bless you in Jesus' name. Continue to excel. There's room at the cross for 